Hello there, welcome to Antiv English News Bulletin. I am Bhavana Kesi. In the beginning, we have the headlines. Water level in Bagmati, Manohara and other rivers of the Kathmandu Valley rises following incessant rainfall. Met agency urges to remain alert. 40 political parties registered for the upcoming federal and provincial assembly elections. Those completing 18 years of age by 3rd November eligible to vote. Jelensky warns Russian soldiers who shoot at the besieged nuclear plant will be targeted. Also accuses Moscow of turning the plant into a Russian army base. And Bayer Leverkusen suffers their second loss in the new season of German Bundesliga. Welcome back. You are with Antiv English News Bulletin. Now we have the news in details. The water level in the local rivers of the Kathmandu Valley has increased significantly following the incessant rainfall. The Met Agency says water flow in Bagmati, Manohara, Bishnumati and Godavari rivers has risen after the Kathmandu Valley received continuous rainfall for three to six hours on Saturday. The Met Agency has warned to remain alert, citing the rise in the associated risk owing to the swelling of the local rivers. Commuters using the routes along these river corridors are urged to maintain cold in wake up rising water level. Meanwhile, most parts of the country are likely to receive rainfall today as well. According to the Department of Hydrology and Meteorology, the axis of the monsoon trough is located towards south than the normal position at present. The Meteorology Department has pointed out the possibility of swell erosion, landslips and floods in wake of the heavy rainfall. Altogether, 40 political parties have registered at the Election Commission for the upcoming Provincial Assembly and the federal elections. According to the Commission, parties including CPNU ML, Lokatantrik Samazbadi Party, CPN Unified Socialist are among the parties that have already been registered to contest in the upcoming polls. The Commission has opened registration for political parties until 16th of August. The Commission remains under operation for the registration and other election related activities even during the public holidays. Meanwhile, those completing 18 years of age until 3rd of November will be eligible for voting in the upcoming elections of the House of Representatives and Provincial Assembly slated for November the 20. The Commission estimates with the new provision in place, additional 100,000 individuals will have the voting rights. Minister of Energy, Water Resources and Irrigation Pampa Vusal had said that the skills and experience acquired by Nepalis in different countries around the world should be used for the prosperity of their motherland. The Nepalis who are scattered all over the world seeking employment and education should contribute to the socio-economic development of the country. Addressing a program organized by the Nepali community living in Finland on the occasion of the Thies Festival, Minister Vusal said we should create a situation to respect work in Nepal too and we can live a happy life in our own country without toiling as hard as we must abroad. She also assured to take the initiative to solve the problem of visa for Nepalis by establishing a consular office in Helsinki. With this update, time to go for a short break, but still to come we have. Welcome back now to the updates from the International Front. Ukraine's president has warned that any Russian soldiers who shoot at the besieged, besieged nuclear plant will be targeted by security forces, uh, by his security forces. In his nightly address on Saturday, Zelensky said any soldier firing on or from the plant would become a special target for Ukraine. He also accused Moscow of turning the plant into a Russian army base and using it as a nuclear blackmail. Russia seized the facility after heavy fighting in the March. It is the largest nuclear power plant in Europe and situated in a strategically important location in the southern Ukrainian city of Nikopol. Ukrainian technicians still operate it despite the site being under the Russian occupation. 
A gunman opened fire at a bus near Jerusalem's walled city on early Sunday, wounding eight Israelis in a suspected Palestinian attack that came a week after violence flared up between Israel and militants in Gaza. Two of the victims were in serious condition, according to Israeli hospitals treating them. The shooting occurred as the bus waited in a parking lot near the Western Wall, which is considered the holiest site where the Jews can pray. Taliban fighters have dispersed dozens of female protesters in Kabul almost a year after the militant group seized the power. About 40 women marched through the Afghan capital demanding rights before the Taliban broke it up by firing into the air. The fighters seized their mobile phones and stopping one of the first women's protests in months. The protest came just two days ahead of Taliban's first anniversary in power after the withdrawal of U.S. and NATO forces from Afghanistan last year. More updates lined up on the other side, but before that, time to go for a short break. <laughs> Welcome back. Now to more updates. Author Salman Rusti has been taken off a ventilator and is able to talk again a day after being stabbed. Rusti was attacked while speaking at an event in New York State and was in a critical condition. The man... The man... ...pleaded not... ...has been remanded in custody without bail. Rusti has faced years of death threats for his noble, the satanic verses, which some Muslims see as blasphemous. Demonstrators took to the streets of the Peruvian capital Lima on Saturday to protest against the administration of President Pedro Castillo as he faces multiple corruption charges. Hundreds marched to reach the general attorney's office where they demanded Castillo's resignation. Andres Capelletti, among the demonstrators, said prosecutor Patricia Benavides had their support in the investigation to, de uh, to demonstrate that Pedro Castillo is a corrupt criminal working for a criminal organization. This week, uh, Benavides launched a new federal investigation against Castillo, the sixth such inquiry against him during the year he has been the president. The service industry in Spain is bearing the brunt of the streak energy restrictions amid rounds of the heat waves. The new measures becoming effective on August the 10th require commercial places like offices, shops, bars, theaters and train stations to run their air conditioning at or above 27 degrees Celsius. This summer's persistent heat wave and the natural gas shortage caused by the Ukraine crisis have put great pressure on Europe's power system. More updates lined up on the other side, but before that, let's have what we have coming up next. Bayer Leverkusen suffered their second loss of the new Bundesliga campaign when they were beaten 2-1 by Osberg at the Bay Arena on Saturday. Friedrich Jensen gave the visitors the lead in the 15th minute only for Carl's Aranguiz to equal at Chelsea. Simona Halep reached the final of the National Bank Open following victory over Jessica Pegula on Saturday. The 15th seed triumphed to 6 6 3 6 4 in 2 hours and 14 minutes. Pegula, the American 7th seed, broke twice to take the first seed, but the Romanian labeled with two breaks of her own in the second set. With this update, we come to the end of this English News Bulletin. But before we say goodbye, let's have a quick reminder of the major stories. Water level in Bagmati, Monhora and other rivers of the Kathmandu Valley rises following incessant rainfall made agency urges to remain alert. Forty political parties register for the upcoming federal and provincial assembly elections. Those completing 18 years of age by 3rd November eligible to vote. Zelensky warns Russian soldiers who shoot at the besieged nuclear plant will be targeted. Also accuses Moscow of turning the plant into a Russian army base. And Bayer Leverkusen suffers their second loss in new season of German Bundesliga. 10 
Well, that's all we have in this edition of English News Bulletin. We shall see you again with next round of English Bulletin at 6 in the evening. Till then, have a great time ahead and stay tuned with us. Namaste.